Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today I wanted to talk about brake pads, specifically the different cuts and grooves that you see in them. We're gonna talk about what they're called and what they're there for. Let's go ahead and get started. Looking down here at this one specifically, you can see we have a line cut out here in the middle. You can see it's also kind of beveled here on the edges. That's what we're gonna be talking about. A lot of times people will ask, what is that there for? Is it needed, not needed? Sometimes you'll purchase uh, brake pads and they don't have that and people wonder why do some have it and some don't so that's what we're going to go over and hopefully uh, Give you guys a little insight on what that's there for and the importance of these Now I have various Brake pads that we're going to be looking at from different vehicles so we can kind of see the difference in there So let's head over here. I'll get the different ones out and we'll get some close-ups and start ex explaining what these things are and what they do We have several different pads here, um, different materials and things. You'll notice each of them has this slot going through the middle. Now, not all brake pads have it as seen here. But on these, you can see there's a slot going through this one, through this one, through this one, through this one. What these slots are for is they actually serve a couple of different purposes. Um, one of the purposes is they allow heat and gases to escape in between so you can see it like that It allows it to pass through another thing and I'll get a close-up of this one You'll see the channel there. That's also a wear indicator. Now this one is more shallow. Let me show you another one That one's obviously deeper but that's also used as a wear indicator. So as the brake pad is worn down, once it gets below that groove, you can see there's probably about, maybe about an eighth of an inch where, where that, that channel um, does not have the cut. Once it gets down to that point, that's an easy indication that your brakes need to be replaced. You just have probably about an eighth, maybe slightly less than an eighth of inch of brake pad on there. That's the indicator to let you know time to replace it. And see here on this one too. You can see that one as well. Roughly about an eighth of an inch. So once the brake pad, once the brake pad wears down to where you're at that flush part right there, that's your time to replace them at that point. So that's what that channel there is for. Once again, this is pressed against the rotor, and as you're getting the friction and you're getting the heat and gases, they can pass through that channel as well, a little escape for that, and then also a wear indicator, so you can see when it's time to replace before you're actually metal on metal grinding your rotors like that. The next noticeable thing on brakes, if we look here, bring it in up close, you'll notice on this side and on this side how it's beveled down. Once again, as with the slot, not all brakes have that, as shown here. But this is recommended, and this is what's known as chamfering. So you chamfer the edge of the brake, and it's roughly a 45 degree angle. Sometimes it may be different if, if, if the specific specs for a vehicle um, are, are different than that, uh, then, it, then the degree might be different, but just on average, it's 45 degrees. But if we look, for example, this one here looks a little bit less. And if we bring this one here, you can see that's definitely less. So some of them vary depending on the actual specifications, but on average, it's a 45 degree angle is what's chamfered and, and shaved off. The reason for that is because if you have a flat edge going right there, you'll get more noise. You'll get more squeaking and noise when it presses against the rotor. So what they do is the manufacturer will shave that down on that angle 
and create that chamfer on there. So that way, if it's on the rotor and the rotor is rotating this way, coming against it, bring that up, coming against it this way, it's not rubbing against the straight angle right here and creating that noise. You have a gradual lead into that point and that reduces the noise on that. That's why you have that. Now, if you do not have them on your, your brake pads and you want to add it, you always want to add it on the, the top part. So for example, this is your, your leading edge and then this is your trailing edge down here. So the leading edge is the one that if the rotor is rotating this way, the leading edge is the one that gets hit first. So if you're, let's imagine that the wheel is spinning and the rotor is going this way against it. So the leading edge is hitting on this side first and then as it's passing, that's your trailing edge. If you have brake pads that are squared off and you want to add the 45 degree chamfer, then you definitely want to do it on the leading. You can do it on the trailing as well, but definitely on the leading one, which is the one that is going to be met first as it's rotating like this. And if we take a look here, I'll show you here on this other brake pad, you'll notice right here, this is our leading edge right here. And you can see how the chamfer is cut larger than on the, on the trailing edge. That's a smaller cut. Now let's bring it in here. You can see the top right there versus the, the bottom, which is the trailing. Some of them, they are the same, but on some, the specifications have the, the leading edge, the chamfer to be cut a little bit, a little bit uh, deeper and larger than on the trailing edge. And another thing that the, that the chamfer does is it prevents lifting from the leading edge. So as it's against the rotor, it'll prevent that from lifting up by having that, that chamfered angle cut right there. It'll also help promote even wear of the brake pad itself so that way everything wears down evenly. And even looking at this one, it looks like the, the leading edge, which is this one here, it looks like a deeper cut on this one as well than, than down here. And another thing that the chamfer does, it also helps optimize the performance of the brake. Some manufacturers also claim that it um, also creates a better quality uh, brake pad as well. But as mentioned already, sometimes you can find them where they're not slotted and no chamfer at all. Sometimes those are cheaper quality brakes. If you're going with higher quality OEM ones, a lot of times you're going to have all that. And the chamfer, as mentioned already, will be cut to the right angle for the, the actual specs for your actual vehicle. Just wanted to go over this because uh, I see people asking questions sometimes. What is that slot? What is that cut? Why is it on an angle and worn down all that stuff? Because they've seen ones that don't have any of that cut into it. They get concerned or they have questions. So I just wanted to do a quick video explaining what they are, what they're called, what they're there for. So just to recap, so we have here our uh, different brake pads here. The slot mainly is for friction, heat, and gas to be released through there. It's also a good wear indicator. You can see when you get below that point where you're down to the solid, definitely time to replace your brakes. That way you're not riding that little bit of skin still on there and then grinding and damaging your rotors. And then we have these angled parts, which is known as the chamfer. That's there a lot of times. The primary reason is if you've got it like this, you've got your rotor passing through this way. That helps reduce the noise because you don't have the edge squealing and squeaking, creating friction right against the rotor as it's passing through. You've got that nice V cut where it's leading into it. It reduces the noise with that. And as mentioned already, if you don't have them uh, on there and you want to cut them on your own, you can go with just a standard 45 degree angle. You want to make sure that the larger chamfer, if you are dealing with, with uh, brake pads that do have it and you're not sure how they go, the larger one always goes on the leading, the leading edge and not the trailing edge. The smaller one will go on the trailing edge, unless of course, like with this brake pad I have here, they're the same cut on both sides. Now, if you're adding it and you just want to add it on one side, or if you buy brake pads where they're only on one side, that's always going to go on your leading edge. So that wraps up this video, just talking about the grooves and cuts in your brake pads, what they are, what they do. Hope this video was informative for you. Hope it uh, you know, gave you some information 
answering any questions you may have. If you have any questions, comments, please send them in. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.